Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. How y'all doing tonight? Welcome to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Morgan Beard alongside Aaron Lee, holding it down for you guys as we do each and every week. Yes, that's right, Morgan. And do you feel it? The warmer weather, oh, yeah. the greener grass, oh, yeah, baby. baseball is in the <laughs> air, and it all began this past week for Southern. That's right. To New Orleans we go. Andre Dawson Classic this weekend, and we're starting on day two here. Southern versus UIC. Uh, you see the result in the first game. But scoreless in the bottom of the third here. Southern at the plate. Tyler Laporte puts the sacrifice in the air. And the prayers are answered. William Nielsen tags up, scores the first run of the game for Southern. So they take the lead. Southern starting pitcher Daniel Franklin, he started off hot in this one. Here, he sits him down with the strikeout. He had six in his time on the mound. But in the bottom of the fourth, though, uh, one on third for Xavier Moore here for Southern. He lays down the bunt. A squeeze play. He's out at first, but it gets the run. So Southern, Aaron, they were up 4-1 in this one. It looked good, but the Flames, they got hot. They put up eight runs in the top of the ninth to take down the Jags, 9-5. And how about our game one between the two schools? Southern allowing five hits as the University of Illinois Chicago. That's who UIC is, in case you missed the memo. They scored three runs at the top of the Jags, 3-0 in the head coaching debut for SU's Carrick Jackson at the Andre Dawson Classic opener on Friday. Our freshman outfielder Michael Wright went two for three at the plate and collected a stolen base for Southern. So a couple positives to take from this one. However, UIC starter Ryan Campbell pitched seven complete innings, scattered three hits there, and fanned five SU batters in the win. But give us some good news, Aaron. Come on. All right, let's get to the Southern Jaguars taking on their in-state rival, those Gramlins Tigers. And this one was a wild one. The Jaguars would go down early at the top of the third when Richard Ortiz gets the single and brings in two Tigers. They're up 2-0, but Southern would come right back and score two of, the, two of their own. When Xavier Moore at the plate flies out to center, and then he would bring two Jaguars in of his own. It's now, Gramlin would add two more runs in the next inning, but the Jaguars would come back in the bottom of the six and take the lead. And this one got chippy right here. Morgan Grambling got off the bench clear. Ooh. Southern got the bench clear. Uh -oh. All off a questionable call right here. Looks like he was in the baseline where the runner had to go out. But the Jaguars would get the last laugh on this because at the bottom of the 10th, Ashanti Wheatley what hits the walk-off home run for the Jaguars to defeat Grambling 8-7. to seven. And here's Coach Jackson talking about that big win. It was incredible. I think any time you can have your kids go out and stay competitive, especially being down big like we were down, and then fight back in and then have some mistakes where we had a chance to spread that lead there uh, in the eighth inning and have a two-run lead and we mess up on that opportunity. They just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting. There's not much more you can ask for them than that. Look at my head when it pop up the bat. Yeah. Uh, go over, I guess you could say. Or, or don't catch it so I can get on base get the next man up. It's a great feeling. It's, it's good. It feels good to get the first team win out of the way. Uh, my teammates played hard, and we and we came out with a win. That's right. They came up with that win, the first for the Carrick Jackson era, and uh, a new era indeed. You know, Roger Cador uh, manning that third <laughs> baseline for uh, a long time, to say the least. There, so it's a new face there, uh, a different, like I said, era for Southern baseball, but. They eventually got it going. First win for Carrick, and you were there for it, Aaron. Yeah, it was nice to see him win in that fashion. They lost re uh, earlier to UIC, but yep. to come back and beat their in-state rival on a walk-off home Woo. run to get his first win, the excitement was there. It was great in New Orleans, and I was happy to experience <laughs> Coach Jackson's first win. But now it's time for a break, and we got to go to those nice, smooth sounds of the human jukebox. Coming up next, Later in the show, we have Collegiate Baseball National Champion join us to talk about 
that new era in Southern baseball. That's right, you don't want to miss that, but right when we return on the other side of the break, it's basketball season, baby, and uh, Southern Women Jaguars uh, doing their thing there on the hardwood of that and much more coming right up here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. You're watching Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm, with Brian Holland, Morgan Beard, Ashley Lyotis, and Aaron Lee. That's right, welcome back to the show. Morgan Beard, Aaron Lee with you every single Sunday night. And we've been saying it every Sunday, the women's basketball team still on top of the SWAC. Yes, that's right, 11-2 in the SWAC going into Saturday's game, Saturday's road test, that is, against Alabama State. They're on deck. And the Jaguars were ready for this when they have a three-game road trip, so they really need these road games. Brianna Green and company right here. Courtney Parson striving in for the lay-in. The Jaguars tra tra trail by three. Now the Jaguars will find some great ballmen right here, and Brianna Thompson inside for the two. She would finish with 10 points. Southern only trailing by two, Morgan. So from Bri Brianna Thompson, Brianna Green, she finds her high school teammate Courtney Parson for the layup. And she gets the foul, Southern up late in this one, 52-51. And then to Brianna Green, uh, Miss Red Lobster herself would connect with her BFF again for two. But it wasn't enough, though. The Jacks falling to Alabama State, 58-56, and a close one. Let's look at some stats, though, Aaron. Let's take some final stats. Brianna Green had 15 points, three assists, three steals. Guess what the Jaguars were hurt at. They only hit one three. Yo. Seven percent behind the arc. That's not gonna cut it. But however, they're still eleven and three in the swag. They control their own destiny, so all they have to do is just continue to win out and get to March. Yeah, they've given themselves some uh, breathing room. So they don't like to lose, but you can afford to drop one here and there when you're eleven and three in the conference. How about those men though, Aaron? All right, let's move on to those men. Southern Jaguar men taking on the Alabama State Hornets with a little dunk action Woo. in the beginning of the game. Dunk contest this weekend too. That That's been right. In. Jamar Sandifer would find senior Chris Thomas for the lay in. Southern would trail early. Next off, Jer Sam off the miss. But Emmanuel Shepard is there to clean up the glass as the Jaguars are staying pace with this one. And again, it's the senior who leads them to victory. He would finish with 12 points, gets the scoop as the Jaguars get the victory 71 to 67. Now let's take a few final stats here. Jared Sam, that man every week putting up points, 19 points. Hey, surprising though, no double double. No double double. Come on, Jared, no, get it together. Look, you're disappointing us, but here. <laughs> Here's where it happened. They shot well behind the arc, 60%, six for 10. That's what I like to see. Look, the long ball, that worked. Now they're nine and five in conference, third in the SWAC. And again, all they have to do is continue to win out and hopefully some other teams will drop and see how well they can do in that SWAC, you know, tournament, Morgan. Yeah, yeah, once uh, the tournament play starts, anything can happen. Third place, uh, nothing to hold your head about. You're making up some ground and uh, finding a little bit of momentum and uh, winning against Alabama State. Definitely doesn't hurt that. Hey, time for another break, but as always, the human jukebox provide no sounds as we do head to commercial. But uh, you got to stick around, though, for this one. We're going a little Beyonce, taking you to Red Lobster. Uh, all the single talking. ladies? Uh, all the single, everybody. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Brianna Green. All right, and up next, we got to talk about the SWAC Championship, Indoor SWAC Championship. We'll be right back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. That's right. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. And as we do every week, Aaron Lee lets us know what's going around on campus for the week to come. Aaron? With baseball back in action and spring sports in full effect, basketball is still going on and getting close and gearing up for the SWAC tournament. Let's take a look. Men's basketball Monday February 19th, they're at Alabama A&M at 7.30 p.m. And then Saturday, we travel to Alcorn State to face them at 5.30 p.m. Now on to women's basketball. They also will square off Monday, February 19th at Alabama A&M at 5.30 p.m. And then Saturday, they take a trip to Alcorn as well at 3 p.m. Now let's move on to some baseball. Yes, we got baseball back. Southern Jaguars, Friday, February 23rd. They start a three-game skid with Alabama State. The first game is at 6 p.m. And then Saturday, February 24th. Again, that time will be announced later on. 
and then they finish it off Sunday, February 25th at Alabama State at 1 p.m. And now let's go on to softball. Softball starts a two game skid Saturday, February 24th with a doubleheader against Spring College at 4 p.m. And then the next game will be at 6 p.m. Now let's talk a little SWAC championship. The indoor SWAC championship happened this past week and the Jaguars competed and their presence was felt because they placed in several events. In the women's weight throw, Jamal Russ, we all know her from a couple weeks ago, doing well, she threw 19.25 meters and then Vashanti Hanna placed in long jump as well. And here is both of them speaking about their medals and their big wins this past week. Um, it actually felt great to compete today. I didn't um, do as well as I expected as far as my marks, but I felt great. I actually, you know, it felt good the whole round of throwing. This is my first swag that I actually felt comfortable throwing. I had so much fun, and I'm excited. I honestly, it feels so amazing, you know, like working hard during the season. It, it shows off, and it's, it's, just very, it's an experience. And as the Jaguars always winning, the human juice box always win as well. What we got coming up, Morgan? Hey, uh, time for another break, baby. But when we do return, uh, Ronnie Rance in the house. You know, he didn't play for Southern, but he knows a thing or two about baseball. So we got him on set in studio talking about the new era of Southern baseball. You don't want to miss the exclusive right here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Aaron Lee. He's Morgan Beer. And let's talk a little bit more baseball, Morgan. Yeah, that's right, Aaron. We're bringing in a former LSU national champion, Mr. Ronnie Rance. They call this guy Jumbo. And for his view on the Southern Jaguars and the new era of Southern baseball, him and Brian Holland talking a little shop. Take it away, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, Ronnie Rance making another debut yeah. today here on Inside <laughs> the Jaguar Nation. Thanks for being with us. Thank We're going to talk about your event here in just a second. But first, let's talk about, I mean, from a historical perspective, it's amazing. All I've ever known, all Baton Rouge has ever known at Southern over there on the bluff is Roger Kador. Now you turn it over to Carrick Jackson, but first let's talk about Coach Kador and, and what he's meant. And just from a historical perspective, your kind of vantage point on this Southern program and what he's left. Well, it's, it's a tremendous legacy that, that Coach Kador has, uh, has left at Southern. I mean, it's a guy who's ultra successful and for really the first probably 20 years of his career. He started out as the head baseball coach at Southern somewhere around the early mid 80s. And for the first 20 years, he was Southwest Athletic Conference baseball. It was Southern versus Jackson State. And one of the two of them won the championship every year for about the first 20 plus years. Then over the last 10 years, uh, it's gotten more balanced. Um, there's a lot of different teams that have really stepped up, spent some money, improved their facilities, hired good coaches. So the SWAC now is very competitive. But uh, Coach Kadar is a legacy. Uh, he was, I mean, when you think of Southern, Athletics. I mean, he's he's probably the first name you think of. Uh, let's talk about Coach Carrick Jackson coming over. He's got SEC experience. He's got uh, you know MLB experience. Uh, what does that do for a program? And now, once they turn that page from that legacy, he's got Louisiana experience too. You know, he was assistant at Nichols uh, for a little bit. Um, this is a guy that brings a little bit of a, it's a youth movement. He's got tremendous uh, uh, connections around the country, just like Coach Kador did. He's got his uh, generational connections with scouts and the fact that he worked in, uh, with, uh, with the Boris Agency and, 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 and all that. He's got a lot of great connections. He has those connections to the SEC, knows what it takes to be successful. And he's got high aspirations. You know, when I hear Coach Jackson talk, it's not about, you know, having a successful program. He's talking about, hey, we want to get back to regionals. We'd like to one day dream of, of, of being good enough to go to Omaha so that's uh, you know and, and look Stony Brook was in Louisiana this past week it's been six years since Stony Brook beat LSU to make it to the College World Series so anything's possible when a coach comes in and they set the tone from the very beginning it doesn't have to be Carrick Jackson it can be you know pulmonary when he came in when you talk about Omaha and, and you set the bar right there what does that do for a program overall well, it's, you know, the first year of, of any coach of any sport. It's a transition year. You know, you, you got some players that get with the program and others that don't. And, and I would imagine there'll be a little bit of a, a roster overhaul from year one to two. There always is, no matter the sport, no matter the school. Uh, you got certain players that, you know, that buy into your way of doing it and others that don't. Uh, coach Jackson, there's nothing but good positives that are coming out of there. Um, I think you're going to see some renewed energy, some new juice to that program that, quite frankly, needed it. Yeah. Uh, but the big
big thing for Southern also is off the field. You know, they've got to get everything squared up academically so that they can get back to NCAA regionals. Right now they're not eligible. They need to be one day. It's coming, and hopefully that will happen sooner than later. Let's talk about another head coach, uh, actually two of them. How would you get two of these these uh, caliber head coaches in for the same event. Yeah, two legends, right? When you talk college baseball, if you did a Mount Rushmore yeah. of college baseball coaches, Augie Garrido and Skip Bertman would probably be up there, Rod Dato the other, maybe Ron Frazier, that'd be the list. And, uh, you know, we've got 10 national championships coming to Baton Rouge this Thursday, uh, February the 22nd, over at LaBear's Casino. It's the Jerry Lane Chevrolet presents LaBear's Legends of the Diamond. And it's baseball season. LSU's taking on Texas next weekend in a big series. That's bringing Augie Garrido, who wants to come in to watch that series. For the first time, only time, we've got – Ten national championships together on the same stage, and you don't want to miss it. For tickets, go to lasportshall.com. It all benefits the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Foundation. No doubt Roger Cador will be in that Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame one day. And uh, listen, you're going to hear from the two of the best coaches that have ever done it in college baseball. I'm sure Coach Jackson will be there as well as uh, many others, legends in baseball here in Louisiana. And interesting because great motivators – but motivated in completely different styles. <laughs> Can't wait to see that, Ronnie. Thanks so much Thank for being us. Thanks for having me. Here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. Guys? Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, if you're a baseball fan or just a sports fan, you better check that out. Like, you better check out the human jukebox at Southern. Always doing their thing. But, hey, uh, time for another break. But trust me, guys. You don't want to miss this one. Aaron, it's Lobster Fest, right? Yeah, I, I love a little pasta. Yeah, uh, so does Brianna Green. Uh, we'll explain what she was doing when uh, Southern was taking on an opponent last week. Uh, trust me, we'll explain. Inside the Jaguar next. Coming right back at you. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. And Morgan, let's end this show on a little funny note that happened this past <laughs> week. Who doesn't love red lobster, pasta, hey, cheddar biscuits? Those biscuits, baby. Mm. Look, those biscuits are great. Rihanna Green went to go get some food before the game and didn't make it back in time for warm-ups. And Coach Sandy Pugh wasn't having it, Morgan. She was late. We don't, we don't do late. Um, she got caught in traffic trying to get back after she went to get something to eat. See, I was going to get some pasta for Red Lobster. Yeah, I think I need to pick something more closer, you know, in the area. And you sit it down eating and then, oh yeah, it's like 12.20 and I gotta get across town in 10 minutes. So. Look, everybody loves that pasta. Yeah, that pasta. <laughs> uh, you know, some of you, that is kind of a bad thing there, but obviously all in good fun. She did miss a little bit of the first quarter, but she dropped 20 anyway. They got the win. But sometimes, man, when you want that lobster, uh, you got to eat. You got to go get it. Hey, we're eating here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. Good As show, we Morgan. Do every week long, Aaron Lee, Morgan Beard. We'll see you guys next time. See you next week.